Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at the Melee Quieter 3Q. This is a mini PC that's about the size of a retro video game cartridge, but you get a full-blown Intel computer inside that can run Windows or Linux. And this particular model comes equipped with Windows 11 Pro. And we're going to take a closer look at what this machine is all about in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this mini PC is all about. Now the price point at the time I'm shooting this video is about $260 on this one. Inside it has an Intel Celeron Jasper Lake processor, an N5105. It has eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and it's configured in dual channel mode. And it has 128 gigabytes of eMMC storage. You cannot upgrade the RAM, but you can add more storage. A little bit earlier, we took it apart and there is a slot for a, a M.2 2280 NVMe SSD. It will not work with M SATA SSDs, but the NVMEs are faster anyhow. But that's the only thing that you can do to upgrade this one. Uh, there is on the bottom here a metal plate that you screw off to get at the insides. And so you could add a good amount of storage to this thing and maybe run it in a dual boot configuration or something along those lines. It is completely fanless, so it will not make any noise whatsoever. There are, of course, sometimes performance compromises for that because if it gets too hot, the only way for it to adjust for heat is to slow itself down. But the entire case here is a heat sink. We've seen computers similar to this in the past. So it will get very warm to the touch, especially on the top here, but that's by design. Although I think you'll want to have a decent amount of airflow to get that hot air out of the area. Uh, there is a Visa mount that it includes in the box and it might get a little warm tucked behind a product display or something along those lines. So just be aware of that. As you'll see though in our review, if you keep it cool, it'll generally stay at the same level of performance. There's a lot of ports on this one. You've got three USB 3.0 ports here on the right hand side. On the back, you've got another USB 3.0 port, a headphone microphone jack over here. Above it is a micro SD card slot. So you have a third option for storage on this. If you wanted to add some slower storage with a SD card, you can do that there. There are two HDMI outputs. This supports 4K 60 max, and at lower resolutions, you could probably drive faster frame rates. But just remember, this is a pretty low-end PC, so don't expect much uh, out of it at that resolution and frame rate. But we will take a look at a 4K 60 web browsing session and a few other things in a minute, so you can get a feel for that. Next to it is a USB Type-C port, and they are very specific about the fact that this is not a standard power delivery port. And therefore, this is not something that's going to work with USB docking stations and that sort of thing. Uh, they want you to use their included wall wart 12 volt, two amp power supply. I happen to have it down here. The cable length isn't bad, um, but it is a wall wart and you can't use a lot of standard USB chargers with it. So just be aware of that. Don't lose that power cord. And it would be nice to see them integrate uh, a full service USB-C port like we see many mini PCs doing these days. And then next to it, we have a gigabit ethernet port. Now, additionally, it has Wi-Fi 6 on board. It's an Intel Wi-Fi chip. And I was very impressed with its overall performance. We were getting off of my gigabit connection here, 500 megabits per second downstream. This is with the access point right above us in the ceiling and getting roughly the same speeds on the other end. So a nice performing, Wi-Fi 6 adapter in a pretty low-end computer here. And the build quality isn't bad on this thing. It's a combination of metal and plastic. It weighs about 7.8 ounces or 221 grams. Now what I want to do is boot it up and we'll see how it performs. All right, let's take a look at some web browsing here. We'll start with the Google Chrome browser and visit the nasa.gov homepage. And this is running at 4K60, so this should give you an idea as to the rendering performance you might see when you are browsing the web with it. It actually performs pretty well at this resolution and frame rate, uh, better than some prior generation computers that could hit this 
particular resolution. And we also took a look at YouTube running some 4K 60 frames per second video. We did get a few frame drops here and there as we were testing this. Nothing that you might really notice during playback, but if you were running the stats for nerds like we were, you would see it dropping frames every so often. So if you're someone who needs perfect video playback, at least at this resolution, you'll see some issues with it. It was not as prevalent at lower resolutions, so 1080p 60 was fine, but the 4K stuff just pushed it slightly too hard. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 84.9, and that puts this right in line with a few other mini PCs we've looked at recently running with processors from this generation. And I also loaded up Microsoft Word on it, and it appears to work fine with all of the Office apps as well and that includes running it at 4K 60 like we are here. Now, of course, I won't recommend this for high-end video editing, but you could probably do some light 1080p video stitching if you need to, and some light photo editing as well. So let's move on to gaming, and it actually did better than I expected it to do, uh, running some casual games here. So this is Shovel Knight, and we were running this at 1080p, and we got a solid 60 frames per second out of it, even over a good stretch of time, so that was encouraging. We also ran Rocket League. This we ran at 720p at the absolute lowest settings, but we were able to maintain a 30 frames per second frame rate here most of the time. You saw it dip there briefly into the high 20s, but for the most part, it was a playable experience, although you probably won't be playing any tournaments with this computer. And then older games like Half-Life 2 also ran very well. This is running at 1080p. And as you can see here, the game is running at a solid 60 frames per second. Now, we also tried some game streaming on the box. We hooked up to the Xbox Cloud Gaming Service, which is part of the Game Pass Ultimate subscription. And we were running this through the Windows Xbox app, and it played great. My Xbox controller connected up over Bluetooth without issue. And overall, it was a nice game streaming experience, even over Wi-Fi. Now, just remember, you can probably get a Xbox Series S for around the price you would pay for this device, but if you were looking to stream games every once in a while and work on some Word documents, you can do both with this one. Now we've got two gaming benchmarks to take a look at. We'll start with a 3 Mark CloudGate test. We got a score of 5,595, and as you can see here, its graphics performance was quite good compared to some of the other mini PCs we've looked at with similar processors recently. We also ran the 3 Mark Time Spy test, which is usually something we run on higher-end PCs, and there we got a score of 328, and it here, too, topped the list of all the machines that we looked at. On the 3 Mark Stress test, we got a failing grade of 96%, and you can see the temperature that the machine was running at at the time that test concluded. And what this test looks for is whether or not it starts throttling due to heat. And I suspect we would get a lower grade on that test if we were running it in a more enclosed environment. We've typically been testing these types of PCs sitting here on a desk where you've got a lot of nice natural airflow going over the top of that heat sink. But I think strapped to the back of a monitor, it might be a different story. But it was nice to see that it did perform very consistently. So they really tuned things, I think, to get it to a good level of performance. One last thing to check out, and that is its Linux performance. And we booted up the most recent version of Ubuntu, and everything worked great here. It booted right up. We had sound and networking, including the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. Uh, the display worked properly here as well, and the performance felt pretty good on it too. One thing to note is that we were not getting great video playback performance using Firefox and Chromium uh, on Linux here. And this could just be that uh, Linux, at least this version of Ubuntu, isn't quite optimized for this particular processor. So we found better video playback performance in the browser on Windows, but the overall Linux performance here was quite good and on par with other machines we've looked at recently in this mini PC space. And I also found they give you a lot of things that you can mess around with in the BIOS here. I haven't touched any of this stuff other than looking at it because it looks pretty dangerous to me. But if you want to go in and tweak things, uh, you are allowed to, and you can really get pretty granular with some of the settings that you can adjust here. Uh, in this video, all of the performance that you saw was from the stock configuration. But if you want to play around a bit, you can hop into the BIOS here and have at it. I know a lot of you watch me for my Plex content, and this should run a Plex server quite well. The 4K HDR stuff will push the envelope a bit, but 
other types of video content, especially 1080p, will run nicely on this device because it has Intel QuickSync built into its little processor. And these little Intel processors really work well as Plex servers, so this is a good use case for it. It's also a good general purpose low-end server, too, because it runs Linux quite nicely, and of course it has Windows 11 Pro pre-installed. Overall, I can't find much to complain about here. It performs well and it performs consistently. Again, great Linux support with lots of tweaking options in the BIOS. And I think this might be a fun mini PC for enthusiasts looking for something to play around with, along with others who are just looking for a basic server kind of device. And it even works well as a kid's PC too. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Brian Parker, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Baby Metal Fox God, Tom Albrecht, Amda Brown, Matt Zagaya, and Tech Time with Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. Don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.